All right, guys. Welcome back to Check, Check, Check. Check. All right. Welcome back to another video, guys. So we're still on the 2022 uh, Unit 2 Cape Paper 2 Question 2. So many different tools, but either way, um, we're continuing on what we are we have been working so far. So this is like part three of the of of, of the question two itself. So we looked at a previous um, question. We were finding practically the drift velocity you understand um of the, the electrons and everything now the, this question continues and asks us to state how the drift velocity or the electron drift velocity obtained in ci would compare with the uh, electron drift velocity in a copper sludge of identical um dimensions carrying the same current to explain your answer all right um so you know we kind of have to look at the fact that they said they said a copper sludge which would seem to be that or would, would would imply to us that the copper is in a more of a liquid format in a sense so rather than being a solid it's more like a, a molten type of copper right um we know that when uh pretty much metals changes their state yes that in itself can affect the rate at which these electrons would possibly move in a more solid format think about a copper being a solid you find that the electrons are able to move around um practically much much uh difficult and that is because the ions are actually closer together but having given the fact that the copper is now in a liquid format or in more of a sludge 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 state in a sense then we find that those electrons um will be able to can flow through the 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 liquid itself in a much much easier way and in addition to that we we should know by now that uh copper is by far a good conductor of of electricity and so you find that the the, the electrons itself would uh, be quite easy to flow through that particular material um, in addition to that uh, uh, conductors generally have a lot of free electrons when compared to that of a, a semiconductor device itself right the semiconductor uh will have a limited amount of charge carriers right that it has um or it can allow to try to, to, to move from one location to the next and yeah i think that that would basically describe what will happen so in essence the drift velocity of the electrons in the copper sludge would be uh, higher when compared to that of the drift velocity in the semiconductor material primarily because um, the ions in the the copper sludge would be further apart so much so that when the the electron starts uh, moving yes they will have less interaction between the the, the free ions within the the copper sludge because the copper the, those ions would be a little bit further apart hence there will be less resistance in the, the overall uh copper sludge itself all right because the ions would be a little bit more spaced apart um yeah so that is what i would would say pertaining to that and so you can pick and choose whatever you want from that um suggestion here all right now let's quickly see if we can take on this question uh, it says that the resistivity of the semiconductor cylinder in c was measured and found to be 8 80 ohms calculate the resistivity of the semiconductor in ohm meter so what i realize is that uh with these questions they tend to want to tie different different concepts together so 
they looked at drift velocity now they're talking about resistivity so it's it's quite a, a compact question you know they're even also tying um ac in it which is a module two topic and by far you know that when we talk about resistivity that's like a module one topic really so let's see if we can quickly identify the things that we know so we know the resistance which is 80 ohms um, because the thing is a cylinder you know right um we would obviously know the area or we can determine the area from what was previously stated so that was the, the diameter in this case was four millimeters right um i think with the length was uh at a one centimeter i believe uh it's important to note guys that these different parameters affects the overall resistance itself of a particular conductor or semiconductor in this case we know the area calculation is pi r squared uh the length is one times 10 to the minus two um meters and we're looking for the resistivity yeah and the resistivity guys is just a measure of how much the material is able to resist the flow of electrical current and that is a fixed value pertaining to each uh, device or, sorry or each materials so here is the famous equation that we can utilize to pretty much describe what happens to the resistance especially when you have the length and the the, the, the area of the cross-sectional wire per se right so from this equation you can obviously see that uh, with a change of length of the wire then it increases the resistance which makes a lot more sense if you change the length if you increase the length of the wire it means that the the the, 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 the current will have a much longer distance to travel so therefore it will collide a lot more with the ions in the material and by extension create a larger resistance uh, when it comes on to the cross-sectional area increasing the cross-sectional area means that you have more free spaces possibly for the electrons to travel through and so that re that reduces the resistance that's what we can get from this equation here now we want to quickly transpose that to make the resistivity which is this thing here becomes a subject so by doing that we have r um, times a divided by the length of the wire so let's go ahead and put in all of those values so we have 80 we had worked out the area in previous question which is a uh, 1.26 right and uh, times 10 to the negative 5 meters square obviously and then we're dividing that by our length which is 1 times 10 to the minus 2. at the end of the day we got a resistivity of 0 0.1008 ohm meter you could find out the units here by simply keeping the, the 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 specific units for each of these and then you would realize that this cancels that so the resistive resistivity unit is ohm meter so this is what you're supposed to get for this particular question i mean of course if there are any questions feel free to ask so this completes that part of the question so let's see if we can tackle the next part okay so this is the continuation to the question of course we're still looking on semiconductor devices yes uh and by extension this is now speaking to what we call a pn junction more more so um yeah pretty much a pn junction which is just uh you taking two different types of semiconductor material that are doped um, with positive and negative ions or negative charges really and you put them together to form what we call a pn junction which is simply a diode in itself right so what they want us to do here is to sketch and label um before and after a diagram to describe the formation of a depletion layer in an unbiased pn junction this question is a little bit uh i wouldn't want to say it's a trick question there is a bit of thing that i'm a bit worried about pertaining to this but either way I'll, 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 I'll explain it to you as we go along so let's see if we can draw what they want us to draw and of course label it yes so imagine that this is our uh our, our, our pn junction so one side is gonna be doped with n-type material right while the other side is doped with p-type material now normally speaking whenever we have an unbiased uh an unbiased um 
PN junction or unbiased diode, we find that the depletion uh, region is way, way wider than that of the, the bias uh, material itself. Uh, in, in the P region, we have a lot more holes or what we call um, positive ions available and, and less electrons, okay? That's typically the case when we have an unbiased uh, thing. And also we're saying that the, the negative side or the N-type material generally has a larger sea of electrons available when compared to that of the holes. The holes are considered to be the positive ions, right? Um, that are available so you find that there's less positives here and more uh, negatives in the n type and of course in the p type you have more positives than negatives okay so within the depletion region what we find is that there's an empty space here where there are simply no uh in a sense charge carriers right um or what we find is that in the depletion region the positive ions would tend to migrate towards the n-type itself, the n-type material, to attract towards the negatively charged electrons. While the electrons that would generally be located within the, uh, the depletion region would attract themselves to the p-type material. And so for that reason, you have a region of space that we call the depletion, the depletion region, yeah? And by extension, the depletion region here is larger or is a wider depletion region, especially when you have an unbiased, unbiased um, system. All right, unbiased PN junction. What the word unbiased means is simply that there is no power supply connected to it. There is no uh, cell, there is no battery connected to the device itself. So in essence, no current will flow. It will simply work as a as a switch in this case all right so that's what they would have expected you to to draw yeah i don't remember the marks pertaining to this but um once you would have labeled that correctly with the pn part and also put in the negative electrons and everything you should be fine all right now what they want you to do next is to speak about what happens after they want you to in a sense draw uh the, the, the thing that happens after the thing has been I, I would assume that they mean when the system has become biased so the, the question says we should deal with before and after so what we have on the screen is before so what we now need to to do is to draw what the system would look like after it has become biased there is a trick to this i think there's a bit of trick because the system can be biased in two ways it can be forward bias or it can be reverse bias so i'm going to assume that they want it to be forward bias so let's see if we can just uh, draw the the, the 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 correct thing here in my estimation All right so we can, of course, leave back our N-type on this side and then, of course, our P-type on this side. To be biased now would simply when we have, and this is, by the way, forward bias. Okay, forward biasing is when we have our, our, our negative terminal connecting to the N-type of the semiconductor itself. So the negative terminal has to be connected to the uh, to the to the to the to the end type of the of the of the of the uh, PN junction, while the piece the, the the positive terminal has to be connected to the um, the P type. Now, there's a specific reason for this, and I'll, and I'll explain it to you in a few seconds. All right. So, what we would expect for sure, though, is that there will be a, a, a decreasing in the depletion region when we have it in forward bias, right? 
Um, now, given the fact that this side here is considered to be the, the, the negative side, or in, in other words, it has a lot more negatives, right? We find that because the negative terminal is connected to the n-type material, all the, the negatively charged particles are going to be repelled. Yes, they're going to be repelled from this this region really because of course if you have negative charge coming here yes then it's going to repel or forces all the negatives that were within the end type towards the right so to, to the point where you will have a bit of migration of the negative uh charges going across the towards the p side to, to in a sense attract towards the positive region itself yeah or towards a positive terminal so that's technically what you would find happening in addition to that at this section here you'd find that the holes which are the, the positively charged um, ions will be attracted towards the negative portion or the negative region of the of, of, of the of the battery itself yeah because obviously you know negatives and positive attracts right at the depletion region in the n-type material, you find that you'll have these positive ions that are, in a sense, being attracted to the negatives that are located uh, at this end close to the depletion region, right? And this is to simply, you know, bond themselves with these electrons, yeah? That, that is obviously the holes bonding themselves with the negative electrons and by extension cancelling cancelling each other out per se and with that whole process you find that the depletion region is uh, tends to decrease over a period of time i mean this whole concept of uh forward biasing is, is a lot to explain sometimes but you you generally would would have to ensure that you put a few arrows to, to, to show that some of your positive ions would be repelled yes by the positive terminal across the depletion region so if if you find that there are charges that are moving across the depletion region then by extension you are you now reducing that width to a smaller gap per, per se right smaller um depletion region and this is of course due to the fact that um the, the, the system is in forward bias. So in essence, that would complete this part of the question. And in fact, this completes question two. So I hope that you guys would have, of course, uh, you know, understood what the question in itself would have asked you to, to answer. And um, I mean, feel free if you have any comments to, to, to pertaining to this, that you, you share them. And of course, tell a friend to tell a friend about what we're doing over this channel. So continue, guys to do well continue to do well and of course you know we can't leave out the almighty god all right so peace take care of yourself bye bye